Have you ever sipped on a gin and tonic and wondered, what exactly gives that drink its sharp, bitter taste? It's not just the gin, it's something called Kwai 9. And this compound has a story that goes far beyond your evening cocktail. Kwai 9 isn't just a flavoring. It's a substance with a fascinating history, a deep connection to medicine, and even a role in saving millions of lives. Today, we're going to break it all down. What Kwai 9 is, where it comes from, and why it became so important in both medicine and culture. Right here, on History of Simple Things. Quinine is a natural compound that comes from the bark of the cinchona tree, a tree native to the tropical forests of South America. Chemically speaking, quinine is classified as an alkaloid, a nitrogen-containing compound often found in plants. But unlike most plant compounds, quinine packs some powerful medicinal properties. For centuries, it's been used to fight malaria a deadly disease transmitted by mosquitoes. When you hear the word quinine today, you probably think of tonic water. That's because tonic water contains a small amount of quinine, which gives it that distinct, slightly bitter taste. But the concentration in tonic water is nowhere near what's used for medical purposes. In fact, the amount of quinine in a glass of tonic water is so low that it doesn't have any significant medicinal effect. It's mostly there for the flavor. To really understand quinine, we have to go back in time. Picture the 1600s in South America in the dense forests of the Andes. Local indigenous tribes knew that the bark of the cinchona tree had healing properties. They used it to treat fevers long before Europeans ever set foot in the region. When Spanish colonizers arrived, they learned about this remedy and brought it back to Europe. This was a game changer. Europe was battling malaria for centuries, especially in swampy regions like Italy and parts of Spain. The introduction of cinchona bark and later quinine extracted from it gave doctors a powerful weapon against this deadly disease. By the 17th century, it was being hailed as a miracle cure. It became so valuable that wars were fought over the control of cinchona tree plantations. In a way, quinine shaped colonial expansion because controlling its source meant controlling life-saving medicine. So how does quinine actually fight malaria? Malaria is caused by a parasite called plasmodium which infects red blood cells in the human body. When these parasites multiply, they cause cycles of fever, chills, and other severe symptoms. Quinine steps in by interfering with the parasite's ability to digest hemoglobin, the protein in red blood cells. Without this ability, the parasite can't survive, which helps the body recover. This mechanism made quinine one of the earliest and most effective treatments for malaria. Even though modern medicine now uses synthetic drugs like chloroquine and artemisinin-based therapies, quinine is still considered a last resort treatment for certain resistant strains of malaria. That's how powerful it still is after hundreds of years. Now here's where it gets interesting. How did quinine go from being a life-saving drug to becoming part of a refreshing beverage? During the British colonial period in India, British officers were constantly battling malaria. To protect themselves, they drank tonic water, which originally contained a much higher dose of quinine than what we find today. The problem was, it tasted awful, bitter, harsh, and not something you'd sip for pleasure. So what did the British do? They started mixing it with water, sugar, and a splash of gin. That was the birth of the gin and tonic, a drink that combined medicine with alcohol in the most British way possible. Over time, the quinine content in tonic water was reduced to safe, tiny amounts. 
Just enough to give that characteristic taste, but not enough to treat malaria. And that's why, to this day, your gin and tonic carries a little bit of history in every sip. Now, quinine may sound like a wonder drug, but it's not without risks. At high doses, quinine can be toxic. In fact, there's even a medical term for quinine overdose, cinchinism. Symptoms can include nausea, ringing in the ears, headaches, and even vision problems. That's why you should never try to self-medicate with it or rely on tonic water to treat malaria. It simply doesn't work at those low concentrations. Another interesting fact. In some countries, people used to take quinine pills as a leg cramp remedy, but this practice was banned because of the potential for dangerous side effects. So while quinine is incredibly useful in controlled doses, it's also something that needs careful medical supervision. Today, quinine isn't the first choice for malaria treatment, but it still has a role in medicine, particularly for severe cases where other drugs fail. Beyond that, its cultural significance remains strong. It's the reason we have tonic water on supermarket shelves and why the gin and tonic became an iconic drink around the world. In fact, some premium tonic water brands now advertise their authentic quinine content as part of their heritage appeal. And here's a quirky twist. In the United States, the amount of quinine in tonic water is regulated by the FDA with a limit of 83 milligrams per liter. That's far below the therapeutic dose, which means you'd have to drink liters and liters of tonic water, enough to float a boat, before you got any real medicinal effect. So next time you see someone joking about curing malaria with a gin and tonic, you know the truth. So, what is quinine? It's more than just a flavor. It's a compound with a dramatic past, one that played a key role in global health, shaped colonial history, and found its way into one of the most iconic cocktails in the world. From the bark of a South American tree to the sparkling glass in your hand, quinine has traveled a long, fascinating journey. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.